this is the breaking news. Triple G Gennady Golovkin, 35 and 0 with 32 KOs. The IBO, IBF, WBA, WBC middleweight champion of the world knocked out the light heavyweight champion of the world. WBA, WBO, I. B F champion of the world enter the arena uncut the Don Juan Banks. This is the breaking news. I am taking a shit on myself right now. Oh, go to the interview with uh John David Jackson. He explains the truth of the matter. We cannot play the actual video. But we can play the audio. Okay, we let's play the audio here. Did you hear that story about uh, Gennady sparring uh, Sergey? I'm just curious about. Uh, your comments over because they they say that Golovkin hit Sergey with a body shot and went down. Just wanted to get, uh, I guess, if you heard your take on all that. Well, you know, Sergey and I we talked about it, and they said, "No, listen, it was, it, was, it was like when the first day they got back in the gym, he was terribly out of shape. He got caught with a shot, and he just, he just says they wasn't ready for it. He says, but you know, their friend, they said, you know, we sparred. He said, like sparring with Triple G because he had to really try to hurt him. Because Triple G's tough. He said, yeah, I had to hurt him, keep him off of him. Yeah. He said, I want to hurt my friend." Yeah. That's why we didn't spar. I don't want to make a war. He says, um, the trainer. Oh, uh, yeah. He says, Abel Sanchez, I want to make a war out of it. He said, I don't want to make a war. It's my friend. Why should I have a sparring session to make a war out of it? He said, it's not about that. He said, but he wanted us to have a war. He said, there wasn't, you know, we we're friends. We we're just trying to work with each other. And he said, that would be said, but, you know, he wasn't hurt. He said, he was just a shot he got caught with the first day in the gym. That surprised him. That's all. He said, it wasn't like he was, like, really hurt bad. I understand that. I've, I've seen it happen a lot of times in the gym. He said, you know, but he said, definitely he's a tough guy. He said, man, I, I don't want to hurt him because I, I have to hurt him, keep him off of him. Yeah. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to make a war out of him. And that's the only reason why he said that. Well, he, why he wouldn't spar with him. There you have it. <laughs> I mean, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Um, Let, let me read this, and then I'm going to give you my live opinion. I mean, the fans have entered the arena worldwide. They asked for this video because it's the most shocking news on social media right now. The fact that the middleweight champion of the world knocked out the light heavyweight champion of the world. You just don't see that or hear that happening. Um, it just makes this fight with Kell Brook even more grim. Get the casket out. Make the reservations at the hospital. Kell Brook is going night, night like ambient and... Uh, Night Quill, Mama Mia, Kell Brook has jumped out of the frying pan and into the fire, and we're just three days away, three days away. September the 10th, two men will be guaranteed to be knocked out. CM Punk in the UFC and Kell Brook versus Triple G. Gym stories are always going to be a part of boxing. And this comes from Boxing News and Views. They have been for as long as I can remember and are always meant to be taken with a pinch of salt. But when they involve two of the most world pound for pound boxers, it is understandable fight fans are going to be intrigued, especially when it's reported that middleweight champion knocked out a light heavyweight champion in sparring. That's something a boxing fan would pay to see. The reaction of boxing fans around the world to the story was immense, to say the least. Well, it appears that the story does have validity. As John David Jackson, a trainer of, of Sergey the Crusher Kovalev, when questioned about it, did not deny, did not deny the stories at all. After watching his interview below, which we just played the audio, most fans are convinced that a punch certainly landed, at least dropped Sergey Kovalev, whether or not it knocked him out. He says he got knocked out. The J John David Jackson is saying that, as some suggested yesterday, is totally different story altogether. Golovkin faces Kel 
Brook in the UK this weekend in his latest bout. And Sergey Kovalev returns to the ring November 19th against Andre Ward. Anyhow, enough of our guff. Here's the interview. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody. Anybody. Somebody. Nobody wants to step in the ring with the Grim Reaper. Triple G Gennady Golovkin. He's the real deal. 94.1 knockout rate, ladies and gentlemen. 91.4. Behind Bernard Hopkins, 16 title defenses. You know Bernard Hopkins, 20 title defenses. Um. Oh, my God. This guy is amazing. 91.4. I'm sorry if I say 94.1. 91.4 knockout rate. And he's going to massacre Kell Brook. Kell Brook, I, I, he did it for the money. You know, because I, I, I ask myself about this all the time. Why would he take this fight? It's not even a winnable fight. I'm more scared for Kell Brook than I am for uh, Amir Khan. And I felt Kell is using the wrong training methods. But I'm thinking that maybe he's just bulking up for his body to take an immense amount of punishment. Um, I think he might just go into a turtle shell defense. I don't know. But let me, I promise you, Kell Brook will get knocked out. And it will be brutal. They, I think he's going to quit. Or they're going to throw the taller, to be honest. Because I think he got himself in a shitload of trouble. When you hear a story like this, where John David Jackson is saying, he, he say he got caught with a body shot. The, the, the thing is, in my opinion, Sergey got caught and that was the end of the sparring session. And he knocked him out. And they, they're saying that he, has to, he wants Abel Sanchez, their trainer, Wants Golovkin to have a war with Sergey Kovalev. I mean, just the matter of that sentence is amazing because even though they're friends, the fact that a matter is if if Triple G can have a war with a light heavyweight champion who, by the way, has uh, a knockout percent of 84, and his punching power is through the roof. He's knocked out Jean Pascal twice, not Najib Mohammadi. He almost knocked out Bernard Hopkins, and no one's ever done that. Bernard went all 12. Um, he had all he could. He, I mean, he would dominate his last fight against. People are calling me. People are calling me because when you when I do a video like this. Bear with us for a second. Yes. Um, when I hear the fact that he can have a war with Sergey, and I, I tell you, Sergey said he don't don't want to have a war with him. He says that um, it's about their friendship, and they're just sparring. But that shows you how you know Triple G is the real deal. Um, Kell Brook will get hurt badly uh, because he just got in over his head. You know, sometimes in life you get yourself into something that is too much when you look at kell brook and you 36 and 0 uh 25 ko's ibf welterweight champion he's big for welterweight he cuts down and the, the one name you look at his resume is sean porter and although he won that fight it still was a difficult fight carson jones pushed him to his limit one time breaking his nose the fact that the matter is kell brook never proved at welterweight that he was the best he kept saying he was the best he was the best he was the best but did he beat keith thurman did he beat danny garcia did he beat earl spence did what did he do to solidify that did he beat manny pacquiao did he beat floyd mayweather you know you got a lot of welterweights out there that kel brook never stepped in the ring with he was going to face jesse vargas 
And I felt that was a good fight for him. And I felt it was a winnable fight. He could have unified two belts. And the goal, if I was Kell Brook's promoter, Eddie Hearn, would have been to get those fights. But they say that none of them wanted to take the fights. But he had Jesse Vargas. And he was saying that it wasn't enough money. Remember that? And that's what makes me believe that he needed the money. He needed the money. They say Manny Pacquiao is broke. That's the rumors. Well, he's not broke. Manny Pacquiao is not broke. And I don't believe he he's fighting Jesse Vargas for money. I believe he's fighting him because he wants to fight Floyd Mayweather. He doesn't give a shit about Terrence Crawford. And I'm not going to get into that whole thing right now because I want to stay at the topic at hand. Um, this has to be delightful news for Andre Ward because if, if he's hearing that Sergey was dropped by a body shot and he sees the Isaac Chalimba fight, although he dominated Chalimba and dropped him in the seventh round, the fact of the matter is he did not knock him out. He did not get him out of there. And if I was Andre Ward, who will listen to my strategy of using movement, countering, pinpoint accuracy, not leaving itself open, and also to work the body. I think when I watch Sergey Kovalev, um, he has tremendous punching power, but I have seen him susceptible to a counter. Um, and I believe that if Andre Ward plays his cards to the T, a flawless performance, um, I'm not going to sit up there and make a prediction right now, but Ward is a winnable fight for Ward, just as is a winnable fight for Kovalev. But I think that if War is on his P's and Q's and fighting and living up to his uh, ability, which he's a professional and he doesn't do dumb shit. And somebody might, but you know, Don Juan Banks, I don't know how many times that Don Juan Banks has to speak up for black fighters or black people for people to understand that I care. But, you know, people want to continue that rumor that I'm an Uncle Tom. And I'm a coon, but whatever, it's fine. The thing about it is, Triple G is so real. You know, when you look at Triple G's resume in a middleweight division, Kel Brook went and beat all of these guys. I think he would have his hands full with Gabriel Rosado. I think that, I think all of them would give him a problem, to be honest. To be honest, looking at his resume, Rosado, Macklin, Gill, Rubio, Murray, Monroe, Lemieux, Dominic Wade. Now, he might beat some of these guys that, you know, really ain't got that much ability. But when you go up in weight, it matters. It matters. And that's why you test yourself. That's why you beat everybody and you clear your division and the welterweight division. That's why you go up to junior middleweight and you beat, beat people there, beat fighters there. And then you go in the middleweight and you test yourself and then you fight the champion. You don't just jump into the fire. And you don't know shit about fires. You're not a fireman and you're running into a five alarm fire. That's Kell Brook. And that shows you the psyche and mentality of the man. That this is not about if he can beat Triple G Gennady Golovkin. This is about one thing and one thing only. And it's called a paycheck, ladies and gentlemen. It's called the paycheck. And you can listen to Freddie Roach. He, he's, he explains it's a paycheck. And then to improper training methods, that's scary. You know, I mean, that is that is ignorant. That's ignorant. You are going to team up with these scientists and this Harlem University of Sheffield, and they are having you lift weights. I mean, come on. The muscle mass is not going to do shit. Him weighing 176 168, 167, something. he's going to have to weigh 160. He can rehydrate and come in there at 176, 180. He's going to be slow. He's going to try to smother and fight inside. He's going to get knocked the fuck out and say, well, I went in there and tried to do what I tried to do, but you only got $4 million. Then you're going to have a problem cutting all the way back down to welterweight because the thing is, when you put on a bunch of muscle and you cut back down, sometimes you don't have the speed that you had before because you balked up. Remember when Roy Jones went up the heavyweight and came back down? He was slow. He was gone. Now, he was much older, but it can still happen to Kell Brook. And Kell Brook, 
a, a, a devastating knockout, then when he does go against the great middleweight, I mean the great welterweights, he might not be the fighter that he is now. So my goal would have been to fight Jesse Vargas had the WBO and IBF welterweight championships and continue to fight the best I could get until I was able to get in the ring with some of them top fighters, which it would have happened. And then after he would have proven himself, if he believed deep inside of his heart, he could beat a Keith Thurman. He could beat a Danny Garcia, which, you know, I mean, I, I didn't think Kell Brook was a pushover. I didn't think he was a pushover. And if he has this much confidence getting in the ring with Gennady Golovkin, then he should have been he, – he must believe um, and was willing to prove that he could beat them. And I'm not writing him off in those fights, but it's, 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 it could go either way. I don't believe Kell Brook could clean, clean, clean out his division. I don't believe that. But just hearing this story – let's go to the comments – we don't want to – can you believe it? He was knocked out, ladies and gentlemen. He was knocked out. This ain't no rumor that he just went down. He was out. He was out. And, um, you know, after you go out, there's a bunch of excuses and I'm out of shape and stuff. But the fact of the matter is it's the light heavyweight champion of the world. That is what's scaring everybody. That is what got people talking. And you know one man that is going to fucking run – like there is no tomorrow is the chicken shit Mexican Canelo Alvarez. Did you hear what De La Hoya said the other day? A flat fee? Just shut your fucking dildo ass up, motherfucker. You don't want to make the fight. And we all know you don't want to make the fight. So let's not play. Don't play around talking about you're going to make the fight. If you're not going to make the fight, nobody cares about him going against Liam Smith. I'm not saying, fuck you, Johnny Hernandez. Fuck you, you spick. Oh, I thought, I thought, oh. Okay, Hernandez, you were joking. Because the first thing I saw up there was you, Uncle Tom. And I, I didn't see you were joking. So I apologize about that. Let's go through. The <laughs> what do y'all think? Oh, Alejandro Mina. Oh, yes, it was. Did you hear the interview? Let me go through these um, comments. We might play the interview for everyone again because people want to hear this. They're shocked. Afro Samurai, I love you. Headband into the arena. This is the breaking news. Maurice Roberts, Triple G. Got that George Foreman power. How Alejandro, he doesn't believe it. He says, fuck out of here. Um, Hugh, all right, let's do this. You the king of the breaking news. Yes, I'm back. You know I got a full-time job, so I can't do it every single day. Um, Samurai wants to see Kovale Kovalev versus uh, Stevenson. Adonis. Adonis is scared. Kovalev would destroy Adonis. I know that for a fact. But... Andre is a it's a oh that's a tough fight for both men. Samurai says, Don, tell General Jerry I said to eat a dick, laugh my ass off. That's what he says. I'm not saying that about General Jerry. Um Maurice Roberts, Kel, a brave motherfucker. I gave him that. Bravery doesn't win fights. Bravery doesn't win wars. It's about having a solid game plan and implementing it. And Kel Brook doesn't look like he's gonna do either. Um, Kel, that's the cash out. That's the cash out, Benjamin Franklin. And you know, it's all about what? The Benjamins. Um, DK Martin Kovalev going to try coming off that Meldonium. Yeah, he probably is and going to get knocked out. Um, KOD testimonies. Oh, I love you, KOD. Thank you. Thank you for being around. Thank you for supporting. He uh, hopes war breaks the brakes off of Kovalev. I heard, I heard Kovalev is a racist. Johnny Hernandez, I see you. You got me with that one. You got me with that one. Um, It's all cool, Johnny. No, no hard feelings. You got me with that one. You said it at the perfect time, man. 
KOD testimonies. Canelo is not even Spanish. He is Irish, raised by Spaniards, Americans, who feed him Taco Bell after he sparred. Samurai, Brooke better box if he wants to have a chance. Ladies and gentlemen, let, let me tell you something. Enter the arena uncut. Oh, man. Can we get those likes up, ladies and gentlemen? Can we get 10 likes up here? Can we get 10 likes up here? We don't ask for a dime. We don't ask for a dime. All we ask is for you to like and what? To subscribe. Gennady Golovkin knocked out Sergey Kovalev in sparring, a worldwide exclusive. And John David Jackson confirmed it. It's horrible news for Kel Brook. Do you see his mouth open down there saying he's going to be like Ali? He's going to be like Muhammad Ali with Parkinson's. That's going to be Kel Brook. He's not going to be able to speak. And I'm not making fun of the disease Parkinson. I'm just saying that you see his face down here. It's, it's, it's to the right side, right of the screen. It's the second video. And he got his mouth opened up wide. That's going to be him when he gets knocked out. His eyes are going to be open. And he's going to be looking at the roof of the church. The roof of the O2 arena. You know if you lay down, you ever lay down in a park, and you look all the way up at the sun, Kel Brook is going to be laying flat. In fact, you're going to be able to get your memes ready and all that kind of stuff or your gifts, whatever they call them, because you can put Kel Brook lying right next to who? Amir Khan. But I see blood all over Kel's face. I think Kel's going to get his eyes cut open. I think they're going to throw in the towel. I think they're going to throw in the towel. I think they're going to quit. Thank you, KLD. I was on CM Punk, the hurt, the evolution of CM Punk, the hurt, and I heard his feelings. He looked at that laptop and he sat back in his couch and he was li listening to the architect, the governor, the mayor, the monarch, the dictator, the writer, the director the producer, the facilitator, the innovator, the presider, the provider, the Don Juan Brinks. Affirmation, confirmation, deliberation, information, organization. If it ain't legit, you're at a severe deficit, too legit to quit. If it doesn't fit, you must quit. The Don Juan Banks is going to spit that shit in your face, real shit. Nostradamus, the Black Mamba, GOAT, greatest of all time, T-1000, the Time Lord. I come from the future, and I tell you what's going to happen. I told you Conor was going against Eddie Alvarez. I told you Cowboy Cerrone was going to go against uh, Robbie Lawler. I told you that Canelo wasn't going to fight Triple G. And what I'm telling you right now, because this is the major big news that's going on, is that when these guys get knocked out, there's only going to be one place to be. Trust me, it's going to be into the arena. If we get the likes up to 20, I'll read more comments. But I'm a man that goes off of participation. It's all depending on the audience. How bad do you want it? Because last time I was on here live, the people got the likes up, and I told people some shit that rocked their world. And you know what that was? It was about Kel Brook not testing yourself at welterweight, not testing yourself at junior middleweight, not testing yourself at middleweight, and the fact that he wanted a check. Get the likes up, people. Let's see you like the video. Listen. Kel Brook didn't want to fight Jesse Vargas because he felt Vargas got paid too much money. So that shows you right there he's having financial problems. 
take that time to subscribe. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yes, Hugh. You know, I just saw it, Hugh. I'm going to read these last comments. Hugh, Creed versus Drago. Kel Brook is Apollo Creed. He's going to hit that canvas. I think Golovkin should get him the fuck out of there. Did you hear Triple G said, I'll give him one free shot? Connor Lewis, why disrespect Brooke? Not disrespecting him. I'm telling the truth, and the truth hurts. Samurai looking at the roof of the church. Preacher telling the truth. And it what? It hurts. It hurts, doesn't it? Doesn't it? When somebody is telling you the truth, it hurts. That's why he's opening his mouth up like that. Because he's defiant. In fact, he's worse than Amir Khan. I'm not comparing this to Amir Khan versus Canelo. Because Triple G tried to get Canelo. Triple G tried to get Chris Rubank Jr. Triple G tried to get Billy Joe Saunders. Kell Brook is a brave man, but he's dumb in a sense that he criticizes Amir Khan, but he does something is different, but is worse. This is the thing here. I'm only going to tell you this. You better put your ears to the to the microphone. Because I'm about to tell you something that is going to shock the shit out of you. Triple G. Wants to get Kell Brook out of there before Canelo got American. Did you just hear what I just told you? What I just told you? Did you hear what I just told you? He's going to get Kell Brook out of there before Canelo got triple um, uh, American. I'm leaving you on that. 